for the first time in a little under here, the West Indies will go into the second match of a T20 international series trailing. Having won their previous three T20 international series, the West Indies lost their first match of 2024 to Australia. Australia is not an easy team to beat, especially at all. And this, this series will definitely test the matter of the West Indies team as we build up towards the 2024 T20 World Cup in the Caribbean and the USA. Hello everyone, welcome to the show. I'm really happy that you are here. Please remember to slash a like on the video and click on that subscribe button. Joining me this morning to look at the West Indies match yesterday and our expectation for the match tomorrow morning starting at 3.30 a.m. in Jamaica, 4.30 a.m. in the Eastern Caribbean is Andre Douglas. Good morning, Andre. Welcome to the show, sir. Yeah, morning, Carlton, and um, <laughs> hello to your viewers all over the world, wherever you may be. Yes, in the match yesterday, West Indies won the toss and asked Austra Australia to bat first. Australia, they made 213 for seven with David Warner getting 70, being recalled from the International League T20. And also, ja David also got 37. Andre Russell was the West Indies' best bowler yesterday with three for 42 from his four overs. In reply, West Indies got off to a brilliant start with Charles and King adding 89 for the first wicket after 18.2 overs. But after the dismissal of Charles, the batting fell away. Eventually, a late flourish by Jason Older was not enough to bring the West Indies across the line in this match. King made 53, Charles made 47, Adam Zampa was the leading wicket taker for the Australian with three for 26 from his four overs. Australia winning by 11 runs. Good morning again, Andre. What are your thoughts on this match? Did Australia make too many in their time at bat? Um, you know, I, I don't think that they made too many, um, too many runs, you know, too much runs, you know, because what happened is that they got off to a pretty good start and I think West Indies did pretty well to restrict them for the total they got. You know, because they started they got with David Warner and uh, the keeper. Inglis. Inglis. Yes. They, they, I think that West Indies came back well in the middle part of the Australian innings and, and a lot of part to restrict them for 2, 13, for 7. So, you, you know, with, with, all, with, with that considered, I, I, I think that West Indies did pretty well in that regard. Okay, but well, look, Indeed, they did get off to a good start, 92 of the first eight, eight overs before Ingis went off the final delivery of the eight over. And that was the breakthrough. And the man that got the breakthrough was Jason Older, who incidentally went for 37 runs from his three overs. You are saying that you do not think that they, are, they made too many runs. Um, Michael Douglas, yesterday morning on the watch along, he said that he watched the Australian innings. I did not watch it, but the fielding was terrible. Do you trust Michael Douglas' assessment of the fielding and think that if the fielding was better, according to Michael Douglas, then we would have been able to restrict Australia to a, to a lesser total? They, they, they did make a few mistakes, but I don't think they, uh, the mistakes that they made, I don't think it, it, it costs us greatly in terms of runs restriction. You know, and as, as I said, we, we did pretty well because I was looking at a, a total at the, say, the 10th over mark. I was looking at a total of, say, around 230, 240. You know, so based on what, on what we did, we came back pretty well. We probably, I think I probably dropped one chance that I think we, we, we dropped. You know, I remember, I remember, because I watched, I did watch the, the innings, Australia innings myself, you know, so, I mean, I was pretty satisfied based on the start that, that total got was, was, it was quite common the way we, we, we fought back into the game. And I thought that at that, at the, at the end of their 20 overs, I, I thought that we still had a chance to pull this. 
Okay, so so you are not you don't you don't quite agree then with what Mikkel said about the fielding, and you would think that the the bowling came back very well and we were quite outstanding in the field. But having gotten off to a start of 89 in eight, in just a little 8.2 overs, having gotten off to a start in 8.2 overs with King and Charles going well, what do you think Saul's not really getting up to that total? What happened is that I don't think, let's first and foremost, we're not thinking we all right. Their certain side of the gun was which was was far which was the side of the gun was huge. The other side wasn't as huge. We don't think the game in terms of which side do we target. And let me let me give an example. Poor one as an example. Here was Zampa, the best T20 bowler, and Zampa was bowling. It was bowling into the wind. So you, you it's a, it was a longer side of the gun. Smart, you can't. Be, Hitting the ball into the wall, longer side of the ground, so we didn't get our arms right. Thinking we, we just didn't thought all this thing, properly. and with a little bit more thought process, I think that could have been overall. So that just a little bit more thought process, I we we, we could have gone home, but we, we just you know I I fought them for that, and I, I think at least three or four of our batters got out on the boundary. So that is telling you that. It wasn't as smart. We didn't play as smart cricket as we should have. Brandon, this is what Brandon King has to say about the chase. Um, just listen to him and your reaction to what he says here. Like I said, it was it ended up being a close game. We got a very good start. You know, we needed that chase in such a big total. So um, obviously after we got that start, you know, we faltered a bit, slowed down a bit too much, and it became too much in the back end. So you know, it's something just to learn from. Do you agree with Brandon King's comment there, Andre? Yeah, of course, of course. With, with that start, the start they got, they should not, they should not have faltered so badly, you know. And the thing about it is, we don't. It's always think we always think about six, sixes, sixes, and boundaries. And with such huge grounds, you could have run a lot more twos. I mean, look at, and I'm I'm, I'm going to go back to to and our batters. It's not like the first time they're playing on, on, on Australian grounds. They, 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 have, they have experience on playing on, on these grounds. So, with the start that we got, they should have done far better than what they did. You know, and far too many, too, too many for batters just came in, just looking, just, was just looking to hit sixes and fours instead of trying to hit some twos on those huge grounds. Right? So Brandon King said something at, towards the end of that clip where he said that, it is something that we have to learn from. These guys are experienced, globe-tracking right. superstar. What is it that Brandon King really talking about that they have to learn from? Should exactly. their experience have made them aware of this situation and let them know that they cannot slow down that quickly? I mean, I, I just dismissed that part. What is it that we really need to learn? Exactly. These guys, all of them are pretty, pretty experienced players, and they have played on us on Australia in Australia before. Remember that we had, when they had the T Twenty um, World Cup, they played in Australia before. And this, uh, the thing about it is the same mistakes that they have they have, they have made as the as they did then. They know the size of the ground, so you you have to. You, that means you're not learning. You're not learning. You mentioned that poor and it into the wind against the leg spinner. Who, Adam Zampa was really at the top of the chart when it comes to T20 international rating as a bowler. He's always there or there about either first, second or third. He's always there. But you mentioned that. But apart from that, Puran really struggled yesterday. And instead of pushing the ball in the gap and looking to get the singles and rotate the strike, he was still going for these big shots and were missing these deliveries and was probably the main reason why we fell behind so much in the strike rate because the other batters, I think in particular, Oak and Powell, were trying to hit too hard because Puran weren't getting any runs and it put additional pressure on these batsmen. What are your thoughts? I thought it was a pretty strange inning from Nicholas Puran and with so much experience and him playing so much T20 cricket you know, you thought that you'd have done better, but I, I, I just couldn't understand, you know, his thought process. 
and the type of innings that he played. So it was quite, and you said he, he put a lot of pressure, you know, on the subsequent batters that followed. So with the type of innings that he played really, really put us on a tremendous pressure. And we were always behind eight ball as a result of his innings. So the, the likes of Russell and Shepard and others were on a tremendous pressure to keep, to, to get going from ball one. And, and, as, we and look, that, as we look towards tomorrow's match, which, uh, as I said, it's 3.30 a.m., half an hour later tomorrow morning in Jamaica, and it's 4.30 a.m. in the Eastern Caribbean. As we look towards that match, in that same interview, um, Brandon King said this, and I, I'm, I'm, tell me your reaction to this comment from Brandon King. Yeah, I don't think we'll have a practice session because we just travel and play the next day. But um, yeah, it, it's, it's mental preparation at this point. You know, everybody knows their game pretty well, and you know, we we'll definitely want to come back. He, he's contradicted himself there. Earlier, he said that we can learn from it, from the chase. Now he's saying that we know our game pretty well. But what struck me more than all in that, he said that they will not have a training session. Do you agree with that position, Andre, or not? The thing about it, I don't know the distance in terms of um, from uh, Hobart to, to Adelaide, you know, and how much that will probably impact them in terms of um, the travel, impact them in terms of training. So I really cannot speak to that regard, you know, and it's really a pretty short turnover period you know so i'm not going to kill him for that really because i i know the circumstance where that is concerned. No, but do you uh, australia will be doing the same thing do you think that australia is going to have a training session because the intensity that west indies play cricket at is lower than all the international other teams Ed Maya told you that in the west indies you have a laid-back attitude a laid-back culture and although persons trying to push us forward, we are laid back and you have to understand that. I just think that this, no matter the travel, Australia can't, Australia is a big country, of course. The time difference, there's a time difference too, but I do not see, I'm going to check, I do not see the traveling from Hobart to Adelaide to be more than three, four hours the most. We could have a knock up session, Andre. Going into tomorrow's, going to tonight match tomorrow morning early. Do you expect any changes in the West Indies team that played the match yesterday? Um, no, I, I, I'm not expecting any changes. I think they probably more than likely go the same eleven. Yeah, well, I, I, well, this is my you do not. Uh, this is my team. I'll definitely replace um Jason Older with Gurakesh Moti. I know that Older made 35 from 14 deliveries, and his three overs, his 18 deliveries went for 37 runs. So you could have said that he won his match because, you know, but I still think that Moti will be more effective. And when Older came to the crease yesterday, it is like the energy was drained from the other batsmen when he was at the crease. That's the impression I got. And out in the field, it, it it could have been the same thing too. I just don't think that Older has the right attitude at this moment. That is my opinion. You do not have to comment, Andre. But that would be my plain 11 going into the match tomorrow. King, Charles, Puran, Hope, Powell, Rutherford, Shepard, Russell, Hussein, Joseph, and Gurakesh Moti. That would be welcome to you all. I'm happy that you are here. I'm now going to take your comments. Please remember to slash a like on the video and click on the subscribe button. Arjuna Sharma, that's something that I think is going to happen in the future. Sami had said that he had considered it, so it's probably something that is going to happen in the future. Kirk Amute, good morning. Welcome to the show. Glad that you are here. I thought you totally agree that Shamar Joseph need to be added to the ODI squad. Also, Seals and Jerry McCaster. But Kirk Amute, Barbados is not playing Jerry McAllister. There's a match going on at Shedwin Park right now that Jerry McAllister is not in the Barbados team. So I agree. I do not, um, I respect everyone's opinion. You would think that Shamar Joseph should be in the ODI squad and the T20 squad. Remind you that he did add a toe injury 
and after due consideration, he was sent on to rest. But going forward, I expected him that I expected that he will be a three-format player. So I do expect him to be in the team. But I cannot see Jerry McAllister getting into the West Indies team or at the time when he's been left out of the Barbados Pride team. What are your thoughts on that, Andre? Yeah, I mean, Shamar Joseph, in terms of Shamar Joseph, I think you'll see him sooner rather than later in all three formats for the West Indies. You know, I, I, I actually believe that Shamar Joseph will be in the T20 World Cup squad for, um, for the West Indies. I, I firmly believe that. And as a matter of fact, I don't know, I just saw this morning where he has, he's replacing Mark Wood for the Lucknow Super Giant for the IPL. Yeah, yeah, yes, I, I, I saw that too, but that's not an agenda, you know. So we'll try to keep it separate here. Yes, go ahead. Yeah, 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 no, I'm, I'm just, I'm, I'm just saying, you know, I'm just saying that. Um, so I, I believe that, you know, sooner rather than later, you will see Shamar Joseph into the West Indies setup for all three formats. As for McAllister, if as you, as you mentioned, if he, if he's playing for Barbados, you know, there's no way that West Indies will. <laughs> selectors will be inspired to, to select him for the West Indies team. So first and foremost, he'll have to put up performances for Barbados for him to be even considered for selection for the West Indies team. Okay. Um, good morning, Merrick. How are you? Welcome to the show. Good morning, Mikkel. Welcome to the show. Kirk, show. Kirk I'm you the same. Good morning, Mr. Cricket Forum. I would rest Shepard and Hussein in the second T20 and bring in Mayors and Moti. So Kirk Amu would have a, a different opinion from us. No issues with your opinion. That is not how I would go. I would only replace older with Moti, but I would not be resting Shepherd. I said it yesterday on the watch along that Shepherd, yes, he 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 was our most economical bowler yesterday. Russell got three for 42, but Shepherd was the only one of our main five bowlers that did not go 40 off his four overs. So he was our most economical bowler yesterday. Added to that, Shepard, during that series last year, those three T20 international series that we won last year, Shepard was outstanding. If you may recall, he was the player of the tournament in, this, in the series against India. So last year, Shepard did perform well in T20 internationals. Not because he never made any runs yesterday. He still was our most economical bowler. So I'm not going to drop him. The only person that I'm going to drop for tomorrow match, if I was the selector, would have been Jason Older. What you thought about dropping Shepard there, Andre? Oh, no, not, not a chance. Not a chance. Shepard bowled pretty, pretty well yesterday, you know? And he has been consistent. Shepard is on the improving. He, 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 I think he's getting better and better as a bowler. So there's no way Shepard... You'd want to drop Shepard. And for Mayors, Mayors has the Mayors has, has not taken a wicket in T20 internationals. Yes. <laughs> and he's not in any in any form of the bat. So there's no way you could replace Mayors with, with Shepard. You know, that's really a no-brainer there. Shep Mayors will have to sit on the bench for some time to come. Yeah, Michael Williams is here saying, and again I said I don't watch the match. I didn't watch the Australian innings. But my um Michael, Michael Williams is contradicting you here, Andre. He said that West Indies dropped three catches. And even the last four, the last four of the last ball, shouldn't have, it should have been at that ball. So overall, the feeling was poor according to Michael Williams. And Michael Douglas is saying it was poor too, Andre. So both of them are contradicting you. Do you recall um, West Indies dropping three catches in the field? As I said, I only recall him dropping one. You know, one sometimes you say probably like probably i don't know if he's talking about like half chances and so forth but i, I remember brandon king probably dropping one one chance but i don't recall those other chances you probably have to michael have to tell me the um the other two really okay so kirk commuter i saw your comment about the player but as i always said that player at that is at this time is not in australia and so we are not going to go down the if road. We generally don't go down the if road on this show. We try to keep it real. We try to keep it realistic. So what we have to pick from is a 70, is a 15 that is in Australia. Because right now, only they can really win the match for us in Australia. And furthermore, that player 
He's been plagued with injury. And first thing that he needs to do is to able to really complete a series. Because my understanding is that he was unable even to complete the SA20 that is going on. But we must stick and support the 15 players that are in Australia, especially the 11 that takes the field. I have said this a million times. Whether it's your favorite player, whether it's your countryman, it doesn't matter as we must support the 15 that is there. Because when our favorite player is selected, when our countrymen are selected, we are going to need the support for them also. So let's support who are there. As I said, DG, we are concentrating on West Indies this morning. We are aware of those contracts. We'll probably discuss them another time. And Tony is saying that the perennial problem, Andre, is that we continue to look six and fours and not rotating the strike. How bad this really is, Andre? All right, put it this way. I think that in the in the West Indies on this on the much smaller grounds, you know, I think they can get away with just with focusing a lot on just fours and sixes and not rotating the strike. And they have won many games that way by by you know by out pouring the opposition by hitting fours and sixes. But when you go to other grounds like us, the Australian grounds and much probably English grounds which are much bigger, it, it's a serious problem because those grounds, a lot of those grounds, the, 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 the I mean balls that would have gone for six and sixes and fours in the Caribbean, they are being caught on the boundary. So it is it becomes a problem then. So we really need to learn how to take twos and threes and singles. You know, because thank you, thank you. So yes, um, yeah, and and Ruddy Latu is just saying that Marqua is agreeing with you. Come, Marqua said that we we're playing dumb cricket. Good morning, Chris Kirkham. You, Jay McAllister is not injured. Um, he he was at um Shedwin Park with the team and he was doing everything the team is doing. So he's not injured. Um, Ruddy Latu is saying, Andre is saying that. Poor and drop Warner and King drop Ingi. So really and truly there. <laughs> Go ahead, sir. Yeah. Yeah. And 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 so Mikel Douglas is even saying too that Warner was dropped twice. And you know, and Tim David also. So Andre, it looks like they have you there. But poor and and he, he said that poor both poor and king drop Warner. However, let us switch gear now, Andre. Right. Let's switch here. Um, looking at the regional four-day competition that is going on. After I am very disappointed with the batting. I'm not hiding it. Absolutely disappointed with our batting. After 80, more than 80 individual innings. More than 80 individual innings. Only two players have scored sent a century out of those 80 innings is this very disappointing is it par for the course is it that there's a great concern in west indies batting andre give us your thoughts on the fact that only two batsmen have scored centuries after more than 80 individual innings in the regional 40 tournament i mean it, it, it is it is very 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 disappointing it's very very disheartening and I, I made mention yesterday that the West Indies cricket on a whole, batting the art of batting has been lost. Right? The art of batting has been lost in the West Indies. Batsmen in the West Indies, they only seem to be able to play two ways. Whether it be, whether, they, whether they're playing four day cricket, T20, ODI cricket, they either know to hit four, four sixes or block. Whenever the bowlers are bowling really good line and length, keeping it tight, they don't they get stuck, right? And a, a, a prime example was, was yesterday. I was I was, I was watching a part of Jamaica's innings yesterday yesterday morning, and I mean the the batters just got stuck out in the middle because what the, the bowlers were bowling good line and length, they were not able to rotate strike, and the the pressure eventually tell. So I'm saying that the art of batting has been lost totally. These guys only know to hit four sixes or block, nothing else. 
And yeah. if you're not able to, to rotate strike and bowlers keep on bowling real tight, line and length, eventually you will get out. So that, you mean the batting has been has been really, really, really disappointed. Yeah, it, it has been very, very disappointed for of a truth, Andre. And not only the batting that have been disappointed, but the all lackadaisical attitude of the players in the field have been very, very disappointing too. We have none of the teams have yet to compete 85 overs in the in the day's play. None of them. Every time they need the additional 30 minutes, and even then, on some occasions, they are not getting up to 85 overs, much more to get up to the 90 overs. Mark you, some persons will, will not appreciate me saying this, but the fact is that when you are increasing the pay of these players, what are you getting in return increasing that pay? Their lackadaisical attitude in the field will not see them winning international crickets. We are the worst team to look at in the field when it comes to international cricket. And I was shocked at how slow the players were moving in the field. I was shocked at how slow they were in getting through the overs. And I think if they are asking for more money, then... What is the match referee going to do? I think the match referee should find them 50% of their match fee for this slow over rate. So if they want more money, what they need to do is to compete, complete the 90 overs in the day's play, Andrew. It is shocking. Absolutely shocking. And, and when you think about it, this, a, lot, a lot of these, it's not like we have some genuine fast bowlers. A lot of them are military medium fast bowlers but they're just going through their own taking their own jolly time you know as i said being lackadaisical with no rush at all you know so it is just as if they're oh well i'm just going i'm getting paid you know i'm getting paid so no matter what let me just take my own time let me just do my own thing right so these players is as if they're not really you don't see the sort of enthusiasm that you would have hoped yeah, Andre, but all right, looking also at the Jamaica team, they lost in less than three days to a Windward Island team that is lacking Hodge, that is lacking Atanese, that is missing those two players. This performance from the Jamaican team, it, it also, for want of another word, was also shocking. It's unbelievable. A team that have Mackenzie, Blackwood, Bonner in their middle order have yet to score 300 runs in any of their two innings, Andre. This defeat is hard to take. What is happening in Jamaican cricket at this time, Andre? I mean, J Jamaica cricket is, I don't know, it's, it's, it's at rock bottom, really. It's re it cannot get any worse than, than, it, than, than it is right now. And a case in point, I mean, a case in point, um, Look at the, the, the senior players in the Jamaica in the Jamaican in the Jamaican lineup. As, as I mentioned, those are uh, Mackenzie was just coming off a tour from Australia, and and um, Bonner and and Blackwood, and the sort of spineless performance that they have actually displayed it leaves a lot to be desired. Really, a really a lot to be desired. And it took a, a young, the the wicketkeeper Romain Morrison. I thought he played pretty pretty well in both innings. You know, it showed a lot of maturity, and, and I was really happy to see that, right? But overall, I thought that the, the, the performance was really, really pathetic, and, and we really need to do something serious about our cricket. And although I, I did mention that we have experience last week, but boy, the experience, it, it seems as if we're novices, really, or Jamaican um, batters and bowlers. We, we have not been performing well. And uh, the, looking at the likes of Derval Green and the likes of, of Marquina mainly, it seems as if they have passed their best in terms of their bowling. It doesn't seem as if they have anything left in the tank, to be pretty honest. Now, looking at this Jamaican team, and they are playing at home, would you, would you change out half of the squad um, and, and replace them with some other players? Andre Persons like um, Gilzine from the JDF, would you bring in someone like Royal or Lewis? What would you do to this team? For the next match, starting on Wednesday against Barbados at Sabina Park. 
I mean, definitely have to make some changes, you know. And in that bowling lineup, I'd have to see, I'd have to probably inject a few more, some younger bowlers, you know, some younger bowlers to replace the likes of Minley and, and, and Green because those bowlers, as I said, they seem to have passed their best. And we just cannot continue. So those bowlers, you know, we'd have to probably replace those bowlers. And um, I don't know what the options are in terms of openers that we have. You, you'd have to probably tell me where, where that's concerned. I don't know. You, you know, um, young Carlos Brown, he didn't do well, but I'd probably still give, I'd give him another I'd still give him a run, right? But I don't know the options where that is concerned. But definitely the bowlers, though. I'll have to replace some of those bowlers that we have. Because it, it, it just doesn't seem as if they're going to get the job done at any point in time. You know, when, when, when you look at the pitch, you, you think that it's a different pitch that the Windward Islands are batting on. So it's either our batsmen are very poor or our bowling is very poor. But it definitely looks, look at the time, like a different pitch. I'm um, cool Royal is saying here, thin first-class seasons left us with quarter big players, quarter big bread, who transition as weak international players, who can who transition as poor quality bread for the market. They lack professionalism and work ethics. Cooley Royal, well said. I, I really appreciate that comment. It, it you hit the name, nail on the head there. It's a very weak, and so this must go back to the administrations. Because people will get away with what they can get away with if the administration does not step in. You know, and this um there's a fan from 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 Australia. He's saying that um David Warner was a beast. Um Damian Simmons saying, but I kept I but Kirk I also oh, is responding to Kirk and God Warner and okay, this fan from Australia is saying that Nicholas Puran was the worst player yesterday. You think so, Andre? Was he the worst player in the West Indies team? Yeah, I thought his performance was really, really bad yesterday. So there's not much to disagree with right there. Yeah. So Adam Zampa ball well, but the Caribbean batsmen played played badly. I agree. I agree. I definitely agree with you. This comment from Michael Douglas is saying. The umpires need to start to talk to the players, both fielding and batting. Too many breaks during play. I was watching a match where I saw the game, the game stopping unnecessarily in the middle of the over. That is so true, Michael Douglas. Andre, are the umpires intimidated by these players and are afraid of them, Andre? I, I don't know if they're afraid of them, but as he said, they really need to take charge far too many breaks too many stoppage people changing gloves and all sort of stuff they need to listen i i believe that things like exchanging gloves that should if you listen you better make sure you keep your gloves if it's, a, if it's a water break or lunch or tea that's it i think far too much of this goes on I, and they need to get rid of these unnecessary stoppage in play far too far 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 far, far too much of this go, that goes on really yeah, uh, yeah, it, it is. It, it it hurts a lot, and we saw two incidents that happened that happened recently. Charles Taylor is making a point here. It is making a point here about Mackenzie saying that Mackenzie coming off the Australian tour is disappointing. Minley and Green should be replaced. Royal should be in the team. I don't understand why Walton is playing either. Andre. Is it? Um, do you agree with what Charles Taylor is saying? Yeah, very, very, very much, very much agree. As I said, million green, they should go. They should really go. It's time for them to go. And I really, I don't know what the the, the, the um the results were like in the trial games. I don't know if these two guys perform, but based on what they've seen, I mean, they look really, really over the hill. So I I don't think they should really be continued with. They, it's time for them. To go so Kirk Commute is saying that the cricket forum we need overseas coaches to train the young cricketers from under 13, under 15, and under 19 because these local coaches is waste of time been failing us since the downfall of West Indies cricket in 1995. Um, I personally, Kirk Commute, I do not have an issue with the best coaches coaching our players, it doesn't matter to me 
which country that coach is from. Whether he's black, white, pink, blue, green, it doesn't matter to me. As long as he's the best coach, is for, best coach, I want him. Just like how you want the best builder to build your house, it's the same way you want the best coaches to coach the youngsters. Um, Sam St. Ellen is saying, I'm hoping those bad performances will be just for this opening round because we cannot continue to have such lack of professionalism. Let's hope so. It's a very good note, you know, because you spoke about professionalism, but this was what happened at Shedwin Park on the first day of the match. There was no play at Shedwin Park because of a mistake by one individual or a group of individuals. Now, as you look there, those were the two umpires that were responsible for the match. Um, Basara from Trinidad and Chris Taylor from Jamaica. Behind, behind Chris Taylor from Jamaica was a match referee hiding. He didn't want me to take his picture. And that gentleman there between the third umpire, the third umpire was Robert Foster. That gentleman there is Ephraim McLeod. He's the head curator at Shedwin Park. So those were the persons who were unable to get the match start on time. Although they found out about this issue from as far back as Tuesday morning. And I asked myself, Andre, this is a question that I have been asking. If any one of those persons had invested money to put on a cricket match, and when they turn up at Shedwin Park Tuesday morning and saw the situation, I agree that there was a situation, a mistake was made, and saw the situation because they have to cut trenches to get off the water off the field. I saw all of that. So there was definitely a situation. There was errors always made. But the question I keep asking is that if it was you that invested the money, Andre, and you came there Tuesday morning and saw that situation, and you know that you are going to lose some money if the match doesn't start on Wednesday morning at 10 o'clock, would you not do everything in your power to get that match start? Well, most definitely, most definitely. I mean, I would have been livid if I, if, if I, if I invested a lot of money you know, for, for the match to be started on time. And, you know, I mean, we understand that we're all humans and we all make mistakes, but there are some things you just cannot. It's just unforgivable, really. And the head curator, is it Mr. McLeod they said? Yes, you, Ephraim McLeod. He, that's the yeah, easy he, he should have, you know, he should have been on top of this. On top of this. There's no way. He should have probably been the last person to leave on the night before. To ensure that all is well for the game so she's the one at the end of the, at the end of the day he must take full responsibility for what took place really yes. really shambolic and unforgivable because i was saying to someone that if 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 i was invested in this match if it was my money that invested in the match and i turn up there tuesday and saw this I am not going home until I know that the field is ready. Even if it's Wednesday morning, I'm going home. Even if I have to get lights and work right through the night to solve this problem. If I have to bake the ground, whatsoever I have to do. But I would have to find a way to ensure that the match got off on time. But that was not the only issue affecting the first round of the tournament. Listen to this report from Andrew Mason. In response to cows going on the pitch and also trampling parts of the outfield, delaying play in the match between Trinidad and Tobago and Ghana at Connor and St. Kitts, in a conversation with the president of the St. Kitts Cricket Association, Dennis Phillip, he told me, and I quote, covers leaked on the adjacent strips. Cows enter the compound, yes. However, the delay for not playing is due to wet pitches next to the playing area. This irresponsible act of inadequate covers is the responsibility of the Ministry of Sports. Umpires are monitoring and will inspect at 1.30. Andre, 
Shocking. What, oh, how do you respond to that? What is happening to this cricket where you have a first class match and cows are allowed to enter the facility? Absolutely shocking. Which one of the two incidents is worse? I mean, yeah, well, you know, you know, the second one to me is, is probably worse with the cows, though, because you, you probably understand the human error, probably just, you know, leaving the pipe on. But how is it that cows are even allowed near anywhere near the cricket ground? I don't get that. Why is it? What are cows doing anywhere near a first class facility where a match will be played? That is absolutely shocking. And it's never a dull moment in West Indies cricket. Never a dull moment. It, it, I, 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 when I heard the report, I just could not believe cows getting on a cricket field, St. Kitts and Nevis, that's, that's, that's Leeward Islands or Windward Islands. Where is it? That's in the Leeward Islands. In Leeward. Leeward Islands. You know, yeah. it, it is absolute. And they are blaming the Minister of Sport. Now, is it the Minister of Sport's responsibility to get covers? at the ground or is it the cricket association where does that really lie andre uh, at the, the end of the day the box stops with the with the um the cricket association you know because i we can't speak for the ministry of sports because probably the minister of sport might have given them you know you know enough money to to take care of things so they are they're the ones who have to um ensure that you know these things are put in place you know so I don't know where where the the, the funding is concerned. I don't know where the, um how they work things out. But at the end of the day, the buck stops with the cricket association. We can go to the minister of sport regarding that any at all. One of the things that I've always said about sport, we heard it many times. Sport is big business. I believe that government should contribute towards sports, but I do not think that government contribution should be what be taken care of the recurring expense of a sporting association. Don't tell me that sport is, biz is big business, and yet still you cannot run your sporting association to make it profitable, and whatever, you want something to be done, you have to be calling upon the taxpayers. If you are leading a sporting association, and every time you have to call upon taxpayers to fund recurring expenses, then you are the wrong man for the job. I, a person's like to blame politicians left, right, and center for everything. But on this occasion, I do not know any of the parties involved. But from a principal position, it cannot be the Minister of Sport, it must be the head of the Cricket Association in St. Kitts and Nevis, Andre. What do you say? Yeah, as I said, you know, I'll have to, the, the buck stops with the Cricket Association, you know. He's the one, they're the one responsible for the running of the game of cricket in the country, right? And you you have to find what, whatever needs, you know that the, the covers, they are of paramount importance, so you must ensure you must ensure that you have adequate i mean adequate what you need is adequately um supplied so i'm not going to put any blame on any um ministry of sports right here it has to be at the um the cricket association which will take the blame in this regard okay uh, and john p nicole is saying is, is saying andre have you play, ever played cricket you know you're bad um john p nicole you know what you're saying we know that we know that, and we know that the batting gloves needs to change. And as a man who made many centuries in senior club cricket, I know that. But I never used to change it ever over. I never used to take off my helmet ever over. I never used to ask for a towel ever over. And those are the points we are making. We do understand that. But these players, their focus is wrong. Their focus is completely wrong, John P. Nickel. But Andre, I know you can defend yourself. Go ahead. Let me say something here. There, there, there's a breaking play at least. Uh, you're telling me an hour. You don't. The, 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 there's no way that the pass at all without getting a breaking play. So either you get a, a drinks break an hour, or you get lunch or tea. So you're telling me that you cannot wait. You cannot wait. You need to spend more an hour for your gloves 
to be changed. You, you need to change the gloves within an hour. No, I don't. I, I don't. I don't buy that any at all. No, yeah, I don't. Well, it it may it may need to change. It may need to change in the hour, Andre, depending especially on, on, on the day. I do not have an issue with they changing it in the hour, but I don't think that it should be changed every over every two overs. And Jampin Nicole, the other question I will ask you: Do you see the Indians, the Australian, the English, the Sri Lankans, South Africans? Do you see change, they changing their gloves every every over? Do you see them towel in down every over? But yet still they are beating the backside out of us. That means we are doing something wrong. That means our focus is at the wrong place. And John P. Nicholas is my good friend, you know, so I know he's going to come back at me. But I have to tell him, we don't see these things happening in these other countries, Andre. And these guys are making far more runs than us. Yeah, and not only that, when all right, when their sanctions applied, for instance, if um if they know if if they if they knew that they are they're gonna be sanctioned with overs deducted or runs deducted, I bet you'd never see that. I bet you'd never ever see that happening. That 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 is true. Cooley Yard is saying, making a point here, Andre, and he, he's saying that based on what you saw at Sabina Park, based on what you saw at Shedwin Park, maybe the government of Jamaica saved the country from, from, from some embarrassment by not bidding for the World Cup. Is Cooley Cooley Royal does Cooley Royal as a point? Andre? Well, I, I will seem to have lost Andre there. I don't know. Um, why Jamaica is not using the under 19 players? Um, this is Simon. Why Jamaica is not using the under 19 players who opened for the under 19 World Cup for the West Indies team? Then, um, what, what I want to say here, Simon, is first thing, those guys only arrive in the Caribbean on Tuesday and it's only one match. And going forward, we'll have to see. Because these under-19 guys, they did play in the Jamaica Senior Cup cricket competition, but they never performed all that well. You know, ex I think Ryan Edwards bowled well as a bowler in the Senior Cup, but the batting, uh, the batsmen who went to the under-19 World Cup, but let's see what happened if they will integrate any of them in the team. But definitely from the time they arrived in the Caribbean, there was no time for them to be included in the team. Um, Supernova 22 is saying, cows need to open the batting in the World Cup. <laughs> Very good one, Supernova 22. Um, Chris is saying, this, and um, Jermaine Miller is saying, this is going backward, wow. You know, it's backward. Yes, can you imagine cows being allowed on the field? You know, Andrea, you hear me? Andy Simit is saying, blessing guys, very good analytical content. Thank you very much. And Narinja Singh is saying, West Indies have big guns in this T20 side. They just need to learn to shoot properly, to, to select their shot. I think Narinja Singh is saying to select their shot. And Kirk Amud is saying, Mr. Cricket Forum, our young cricketers are so poor in their batting techniques. The, they cannot play all of the cricket shot shot most of our players can only play three or four shots this is poor coaching here it, the thing about it though in a kirk amud some of these players don't want to listen that's it they don't listen they think they know it all and they won't listen that's it they won't listen greetings and blessing charles taylor is saying do you have any input where Paul Palmer is concerned? I think he was invested in, and I don't hear, hear anything about him. Paul Palmer have decided to migrate to the United States of America, and so he, he took that decision. I think he's trying to qualify for the United States. That is my understanding. Based on the state of play, Lee Woods versus Academy will be the most exciting game. CCC will be beaten by Barbados and Guyana versus Trinidad is draw already. Um, fair enough assessment at Supernova 22. Kalanji, welcome to the show. West Indies forecast seems to be on uniform gloves, shades, and looking good. <laughs> Ger <laughs> Kalanji, Gerard Mead, our players are too soft and act as fashion 
could not have said it better there, Gerard Mead. Welcome back, Andre. I could not yep. have said it better there. Um, tattoos, cattle chains, and spitting. Did you ever see Viv Richards behave like this? No, clearly, clearly not. Clear, and they used to make a lot of runs. You know, Andre and, and John P. Nicole, my good friend, do you know how many times Brian Lara changed his gloves when he made the 400? Do you know? Check it out, John P. Nicole, and then come to me. Good point, very good point. Look at Adrian Weir performances in Cedar come since 2020. He wrote a looking. Okay, cool, Royal, definitely. We look at that. And Gerard Mead saying, we are still giving the asses, the asses catching practice. E, you can clear the boundary, play along the field and through the gaps, etc. That's Gerard Mead. Um, Andre, what's your final comments? Well, I mean, in, in as it relates, so let me just start with um, the West Indies team first. Well, I expect them to, um, well, to me, the, real, the, the, the results are not all that significant in the greater, in the greater things in terms of World Cup preparation, but I still would love to see them just a bit more thought processing their game. You know, I, I, even if they, they lose, and I say the result is irrelevant here, but they must, I, I must see some thought process in their game the way they maneuver the field, you know, not try to hit the cover of the ball, hit every ball for fours and for sixes. And I really hope that I love to see some improvement in the bowling, in particularly in the power play. We must see some improvement in that regard. So those are the things I'm really looking out for in terms of the West Indies team going forward in the remaining two games. For Jamaica, the only, we can only go up from here. We are at rock bottom at this point in time, and we can only go up. So I, I hope that a few players will put their hands up, and we will see some performances. Because what we have, what we have seen in the first game was pilotless, it was pathetic, and we really hope that some of these players can put their hands up and be counted. And the same thing for, for other teams. We need to see, you know, these players being professionals. They need to be come with the work ethic, the more, the more discipline, and some thought process in their games. Yeah, adding to what you said, Andre, on the screen is my playing 11 for tomorrow's morning game against the West Indies. I would go into the match with this playing 11. As for Jamaica, I expect changes to the playing 11, I expect changes to the squad for the second match. Overall, for this year regional four-day tournament, I want to see more urgency in the field. I want to see batsmen concentrating and batting instead of fashion and how they really look, as Gerard Mead said. There's a lot, I want to see more intensity. I want to see the teams getting through their, ni their 90 over for the day. It is like learning to drive. When you are learning to drive, you drive very slowly because you want to control the car on the road. As you learn to drive and you get better, you start to drive faster. So you become more effective at the driving. It's the same way in the cricket. For you to become more effective, you have to increase your intensity. You have to drive faster and increase your effectiveness. So I'm looking forward to intensity from the players in this regional four-day tournament thank you all for tuning in i will be back tomorrow morning with a live watch along if not for the first innings definitely for the second innings this match starts half an hour later so hopefully we will have a complete match have a great day everyone thank you very much for joining us andre and take care of yourself take care of your loved ones be good now